when BDD was at, at its highest point, I was trying very hard to be strong, but I would go in my bedroom and I would cry. And I thought I was getting away with it, but he heard me. Then he came in one day and he said, Mom, I need you to be strong. And apparently that wasn't it. So I got help from myself. And I, I, on the flight here, I was thinking about when the that flight attendant said, if, you, if the oxygen mask comes down, if you are traveling with a child or somebody acting like a child, put your mask on first and then assist them. And I, that kind of hit a nerve with me because it's like, well, that's the same thing with BDD. I'm down, I'm depressed, he's picking up on it, I'm not strong, I'm trying to be, but he's seen through it. And so I really started focusing on that. I would, I have a niece I'm really close to, and um, we would go out. I'd just say, look, I, I need to get away, let's go out, have a few drinks, go out to dinner. And she was like my therapist. And, and then I'd just unload on her, and then I could come home. And, and I would find myself better able to cope. At this point, the older kids had just made a life for themselves, and, and so they weren't as round as much. One of them was going away to school, the other one got married, and, and so they really weren't uh, around as much. Uh, but it, so it got better, but it's like for probably six years, it, it, BDD controlled every aspect of our family life. And then we finally, he got better, we got better at dealing with it, and then uh, it all started to change. And uh, 10 years ago, he could not leave his bedroom. If I asked him to go get the mail, he could not get the mail. Two years ago, he wanted to go on a trip to Ghana and work on a human trafficking project. It was something he was just very adamant about doing. And he ha continues to work with the therapist because if it starts to kind of still kind of he'll have days it'll kind of roar its head and he has the tools so he just gets a handle on it. Uh, and he went, he made that trip. And as a mother I was thinking, oh no, I really don't want, I don't want to do that because, you know, uh, in order to treat BDD, everything you do as a parent that you want to do as a parent just feeds it. So you have to back off and you have to let them fight their battle. It's their battle and you can't fight it for them. So the sooner you realize that and you come to grips with that, you start living your life, you, you have as normal as a family life as you can, which it hadn't been for years because of this, and this is what everybody was focused on and dealing with. Then you start to really see a change. And I found that if I'm not available and he has an issue and he calls me, if I think it's related to BDD, as I'll start to see the signs, if I even think that it is, then I treat it like it is. And I won't answer his calls. And then by the time I come home, he's worked through it. But it's difficult, you know, to get to the point that you can do that because it's contradictory to everything you want to do for your child. But he did make the trip to Ghana. He had, he had an amazing time. He actually spent 36 hours at JFK because of weather-related conditions. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, why is this happening now? Well, actually, he got through it. He dealt with it. And he, he had a wonderful time in Ghana. He, went, he visited a school, that, a very, very poor area of town. And, he, and I think because of what he's gone through, it has made him... For as young as he is, he is he is more compassionate and more caring. And so now he actually gets along with his family members. And there was a time when I thought, you know, BDD was just going to tear our family apart. But but you have to be strong. You have to take time out for yourself. You have to still continue to live your life and do things as a family. And remember that he's not your only child. That if you have other children, and you and you have to you know, encourage him, help him, support him, be there for him, but don't reassure him and, and let him fight his own battle.
and then, you know, he can, there is hope. With, a, initially it seemed like there was no hope that we had lost our son, but, you know, with proper treatment, with working together as a family, and I think it's very important for the family to understand because it doesn't make any sense. And so then everybody learns how to deal with it, which a lot of times is just not dealing with it. Um, there's hope.